Jay Cuddington here at Discover 2015 in London, and I'm here with Ozer and Aruba, which joined yes. Hewlett Packard Enterprise about six months ago, I want to say. Yep, pretty much, pretty much. Are, are you guys feeling like you're fully integrated in the company now? Yeah, I was actually talking to um, talking to one of our friends. I called it like an arranged marriage. You know, it's kind of awkward first time your parents bring over the girl or the boy and you kind of don't know what to do and it's kind of awkward and don't know how to start a conversation. But it's, to be honest with you, it's going well. Like no organization, I don't think that is uh, ready for this type of a merger, right? But I think it's going well. The cultures of the teams are emerging really well. Uh, I now have the responsibility to do product marketing for the entire product line with folks joining us from the HP side of the house and the Uruba side of the house. And a lot of the other departments are going through the same um, same process. More importantly, the R&D is being unified very fast. Actually, we have some exciting announcements that are coming up in March. We had some exciting announcements here today. Every quarter, you're going to hear this organization announce something really exciting. So that innovation engine is kicking in really fast, which is good. And the sales force, the people who actually on the streets and supporting our customers and everybody watching, um, they're actually already aligned. They're being trained as we speak. So we're off to the races, I would say, um, since September, where we did our joint company slash sales kickoff. And since then, we it's been just busy. So what are the uh, what are the big challenges that the unified uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise Networking and Aruba are are facing together? Yeah. So um, there are a couple of things. Ultimately, one big change that's happening in everybody's daily life is that now we, we're we looking at a small screen more than ever, right? You know, in the past, if I wanted to send an email, let's say 15 years ago, I go to a cube, I turn on the lap uh, PC, I log in, I start the Outlook app, and then I get to send an email. Now I just do it while walking. I would right? say there are, there are days that I never ever open a laptop. Exactly, like I just, I don't think that I opened a laptop yesterday, the entire time, and that, what that requires is the network now does not serve just small moments of connectivity. You can design it to be static on the wired desktops, not a whole lot of traffic. It's easy to monitor because nobody's moving. Nobody's bringing a desktop PC from home or nobody's bringing a printer from home, right? Things are static. Once you set it up, you set up and forget. When the end user computing device changes from a desktop PC to a smartphone that you carry all the time, the tagline that we used to say, which I think is very, very um, um, appropriate for this case, is when people move, the network needs to follow, right? So the connectivity needed to be always on. It was need to be 24/7. So those are the technologies that we're essentially building. You know, everything that we do in hardware, software, how we serve the customer, how we serve the user, starts with the fact that now we have the smartphone as the most expensive digital real estate. And many of our customers are realizing that too. Millennials are entering the workforce without knowing what a voice or IP phone is. Like we have actually people graduating from school not knowing how to dial a traditional phone. Well, nobody actually, nobody dials it. anymore. But, but it, nobody dials anymore, right? But, you just but most tap. people also don't know they have to dial nine. <laughs> That's right. So the expectation of the workers are changing. The device is changing. The apps that we use actually change. I mean. Let's, let's face it, right? Let's take, give an example about our expectations as a user from the apps and connectivity in our social lives. Like if you're driving on a highway, 75 miles an hour, and Google Maps cannot pinpoint your exact blue dot location, and you miss a turn, you're pissed. I am, I, that actually happened to me the other day. <laughs> exactly, right, you're pissed. So if that's the expectation from the end user from a connectivity perspective, hey, I want to send data, I want to post pictures, I want to watch videos, I want, to, I want the network to locate where I am so that I can get valuable services around me. If that's the expectation, enterprise networks needs to follow up. So I always go back to take a look at your social lives. You know, how do you interact with other people? Wouldn't it be great to interact with your enterprise space and your workforce and your colleagues and your guests just like the way you interact with them in their social lives, right? So I think a lot of our technology is banked on that. When you look at the brand, when you look like at the product line, you go, Okay, that's a lot of good hardware, but then there's amazing level of great software that we build to actually make that network ready for mobile. 
That's so the, so that's how, how are you doing that? Because I mean, clearly, uh, at least in the corporate environments that I have connected to the network, yeah. that, that promise has not been realized yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely evolving, and I think that's why we're here, right? That's why a Hewlett Packard Enterprise made a strategic decision to spend the dollars that they want to spend and bring us on board to basically go that go to that last mile because let's face it, Hewlett Packard Enterprise has a huge uh, brand recognition in the data center networking, in the campus networking, switching and routing, and we opens doors for us tremendously well, right? This is an opportunity that we couldn't have asked for in any other way. But then they didn't really have the control over the last mile. You know, that wireless connectivity, that mobile experience. So there are literally two things that are, we're actually doing. One of them is announced here yesterday, actually today, right? I'm mixing up the dates, traveling from US. I have no it, idea what day it is. <laughs> yeah, so today we announced a solution where we're essentially delivering location-based services to employee and visitor smartphones while they're connected, indoors. So imagine your Google Maps experience. Yep. On a digital map, you can find a gas station or a restaurant. Yep. You can get reviews about that restaurant. You can take a look at the menu at that restaurant, some content. You can wave find to that restaurant. Maybe even have Google remind you to call your wife when you get to the restaurant. So there's some workflow, right? Yeah. There's a digital map, there's a location technology. So obviously everybody knows Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is a connectivity technology, just like LTE is the cellular data technology. So we're adding Bluetooth as the indoor GPS technology, similar to how GPS is outdoors. So if I need to find a cubicle and I've never been there before, this will help me find it? Exactly. So what we help you convert your indoor maps to digital format. We help you port those digital content to an existing mobile app that your employees or visitors might be using. We enable to create content on the digital map. We enable you to find directions to that, to the different content and locations. And then on top of that, which is a big pain point for many people here in this audience, they're IT people, if you cannot manage it, it doesn't exist in IT, right? Yep. So we're actually the only indoor GPS slash Bluetooth technology that can be managed centrally. What I about mean, what about finding that guy that's never at his desk that you want to go talk to? You? Is it, well, uh, we don't we don't track people. <laughs> I think that's a slippery slope. We just we just place we just create place marks around the area. Tracking people, uh, you know, we don't we don't we're not in that business yet. So, the the announcement essentially introduces that technology centralized management. But there's one more important component when it comes to deploying these apps. Right? At this point, you might start asking, why is Aruba in the business of talking mobile apps? Like, why are we even care about mobile apps? Because we feel like with the millennials, with the smartphones, just like websites used to be the, used to be the thing for internet, right? That's how yep. we all experience internet. Going forward, many of us will experience internet through apps. And those apps tie us to digital maps, tie us to multimedia content, tie us to our friends, communication using voice and video. Through those apps, we actually enhance our social lives and work lives. So we have to be there. So we're also announcing a app developer partner program, where if there are app developers like Robin, for example, they're featured in our announcement, or Venue Next, these folks are building apps for enterprises and stadiums, venues, to interact with their employees and guests and they're making our location-based technology, which is called Meridian, part of their platform. So, for example, Venue Next at a stadium allows you to watch live replays within five seconds. Nice. A goal happens or a touchdown happens, your favorite sport, something important happens. You can literally get video content on your phone within five seconds. They already made the integration in their platform. But now we're adding location technology to them while we actually allow the user to go and find the nearest burger stand with the less number of people so they can get back to the game really quickly, right? And that is very important for that venue because it's immediate. It's yep. immediate improvement of visitor experience. It's like ways for stadiums. Exactly, exactly, right? So we are in the business of enabling data and GPS indoors. And Venue Next is really good at creating a good experience for the end user. So we're using them 
as a way to go after some of these key use cases. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I guess we're, we're all going to have to hold out till March to see what the, the really big announcements are, because it sounds like you've got some more things coming. Yeah, I think so. But I can give a small sneak preview. Of course, we have a lot of wired and wireless networking components. Yep. Um, both sides of the house brought some products to the table. We're rationalizing those product lines. Um, I think that would be no surprise to say that the Aruba Wi-Fi is going to be the go forward wireless networking portfolio. That's where the innovation engine will kick in. And the Hewlett Packard Enterprise wired networking portfolio is where the innovation will continue. So, but that's all I can say, not the individual feature set. But, uh, but yes, March will be, a, will be another big announcement for us. All right, well, I look forward to see what's coming next. Absolutely. Thanks, Thank Jake. You.